Hello everyone. Recently I found this deal on in OfferUp, EVJ39 TFTW for 500. And upon inspection, it turned out that this this card is almost a brand new. There was no signs of usage, no dust, nothing. So maybe they just turned on, tested something. But other than that, it looked like a brand new. And after running 20 minutes for Mark, we can see the temperature for the core is 74 degree. For the memory was around 94, which is a little bit high. But 3090 should be high because the memory chips on the back is not being actively cooled. So I decided to tear it down to see in which condition is the thermal paste, thermal pads, and also as I had the graphite thermal pads, which can lower the memory temperatures around 10 degrees, which I already saw in my ASUS 380 Tough Edition. I decided to replace them and see if we can lower that memory temperatures a little bit more to be at least uh, within like 80 to 90 degree. Even though I'm not going to do any mining, nothing on this card, but again, like 3090, they tend to run hot on the memory, and if we can lower that temperatures, why not? Also, I purchased the phase change thermal pads, which I'll be using first time in my experience, and it's very interesting how it will behave in the long run. And as this card, I'm going to keep at least for maybe one year until some better deal will be available in the market. Maybe some used 490s around like $700 or $800. I think this card can fully satisfy my needs of game testing and then doing some editing. So if you're watching my channel, you know that uh, before this card, I had the ASUS 3080 Tough Edition, which I upgraded to the HP 3090, the base stock edition, which was very noisy. And it was interesting for me, interesting for me to buy that card, to try to lower the noise level, to improve the temps, which I successfully did. But then I went overseas for the business trip and take that card with me to see if I can resell it for higher price. And I managed to sell it for $520. So with that amount of money being available, I got this one, which is much better card and runs much cooler and uh, quieter, which is more important for me. So if we can improve the memory temperatures a little bit on this card and also see if the phase change thermopad will do some magic trick on the GPU die temperatures, then why not? It will be two in one, like we'll test how it behaves the phase change in the long run. And also we'll see how this card can be useful for my editing and also game testing. And you will ask maybe why I didn't went and buy 470, which is now in second hand being sold like $450. Even you can find like $400. I saw the Zotac uh, edition for $400, but that card has just 12 gigabyte, which is not enough for me as I'm planning to test the games, especially to see the memory usage for that games, which will be announced in the near future. And like 12 gigabyte is not enough to understand the real usage because as I already saw in some games, it's already not enough in the 1440p ultra settings and some memory is being built over to the CPU RAM, like the Hogwarts Legacy. So the other option was like uh, go to, with the AMD cards, especially 7900 XT, which has 20 gigabytes, and 7900 XTS, which has 24 gigabytes. But again, like that cards probably cost at least 100 or $200 more in the used market, and they are relatively new. Maybe in future when the new Super Series will be introduced by NVIDIA, like 4070 Ti Super, which will be like 16 gigabytes according to the rumors, maybe I will upgrade to that one. But again, even 16 gigabytes is not guaranteeing to be able to handle all the memory usage by the new upcoming games. So 24 gigabytes is a safe bet. So taking apart the card we have to be very careful not to bend the PCB or not to bend the GPU die 
as it can loosen the contacts even it can loosen the contacts under the memory chips so we have to be very careful because it looked like uh, after some uh, period of usage that could thermal parties can be very sticky the same could be the thermal pads for the memory so by taking apart we can see that the copper base and on the VRM chokes we can see that the some kind of thermal parties have, the, have been used which is a lower quality thermal paste and also the VRM chips is being cooled by the uh, direct contact with the heat sink so this cooling for this card is very good the component base is very good the quantity of phases is more than enough power limit is very high so this is like if you want to buy 3090 this is one of the best cards available for this chip but again as I said I'm going to replace everything I'm not playing even though uh, the thermal paste was like a brand new there wasn't right out I'm going to clean it up and replace everything to make it uh, with a brand new paste, paste and see how this card will behave in long run. Also if we can decrease the memory temperatures and if we'll be able to decrease it, then really good. So after cleaning, applying the graphite thermal paste, which you can see here, and also measuring the thermal paste for the VRM chokes, as there is no real uh, pets available for that chokes, it was uh, glued with the thermal paste. So after several attempts, we finally found the uh, exact thickness which is needed to provide equal connection for the GPU die, memory chips, the VRM and VRM chokes. As all these have been replaced and the, for example, the graphite, pa graphite parts, they are 2.2 millimeter thickness when it is uh, advised to use 2 millimeter thick thermal pads for the memory. So all these have been optimized to have the best available contact for all the components. And again, here we can see the thermal pads, which is made from graphite and which we have to be very careful as far as I know they are uh, they can damage your components they here you can see they are made from materials which can transfer electricity so we have to be very careful as far as I know not to have uh, shorts and kill some memory chips or the, even the GPU die so after applying and using 24 of pets which is not cheap regularly 12 pack you can find around 20 dollars but i managed to get them from amazon there was some glitch in the system i guess they put the price for one piece around two dollars something but when i bought just one piece for testing as i was thinking that it's not possible that it's being sold by the pieces they came in the whole box so 12 piece for two dollars and then I bought several boxes just in case if it will be run out so I have been using that pads in the, my 380 now in this 3019 I still have several left so after replacing everything making sure that it's sitting tight Again, we're running 20 minutes for mark and we can see that we decrease the temperature for the memory around 10 degrees, 8 to 10 degrees. Now we are hovering around 84, 86. For the core, it's a 68, again, 6 degree difference. The other components also running a little bit cool. And the fan speed, it was before, it was 71%. Now we can see it's running 64. So we can say it's a complete success. So if you have similar kind of card and you want to decrease, decrease its temperatures, you can follow this guide. Just make sure to be very careful when we will be opening and uh, separating the heatsink from the PCB, not to have any bends. Try to be very patient, 
spend some time, carefully remove it. Then you can spend on the face change thermal paste around like 10 to 15 dollars. And if you will find the graphite pads, full box, two of them around 40 dollars. So by investing like $55, you can have similar improvement with your card, which will also prolong the life, I guess, if you are planning to keep this card more than like three, four, five years. So for today's videos, that's it. See you in the next one.